know when to take risks and to kind of step away from ch just checking boxes and, and, and uh, you know, accumulating as many brands in their resume as possible and actually do something that, that is innovative. And, and to that, you know, for that, you have to give the guy credit. I mean, he's clearly a smart guy. He's very enterprising. There's mm -hmm. no doubt about that. But, but to be honest, like nowadays, I don't, I don't even think about Mark. I'm actually a shareholder, shareholder, shareholder of Facebook. Before I come to all the inevitable questions on uh, being the inspiration for Facebook, let me ask you about Sum Zero. So it's a very different world. It's, you're talking about investment research, data to do with the financial sector industry. How did you stumble upon this? Yeah, I worked at a hedge fund actually in Boston right. from 2006 to 2007. And it's an interesting story. Um, in 2007, in the summer of 2007, mm -hmm. Uh, the credit markets got hit very badly. Mm. And so the fund I was working at started losing a lot of money. Mm. And the founder of the fund, uh, this guy, Jeff Larson, decided to sell all of the assets of the fund to another hedge fund rather than risk um, you know, staying the course and, and, and you know, maybe bringing back uh, you know, his performance back up. So you know, basically I got fired um, and, and the whole team was let go, the fund shut down, uh, and I was faced with the decision of either going to another fund, staying in finance, or starting my second internet business, decided to, to pursue the second option. Uh, and the inspiration for Sum Zero was actually uh, you know, a mix of my financial experience, but also um, Wikipedia. And mm -hmm. the idea was to, to basically build a community for hedge fund and mutual fund professionals um, where our members use the site to share their own proprietary research. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the reason that's a little counterintuitive is that mm -hmm. people don't normally associate hedge fund guys but sharing their research, right. or sharing their proprietary yeah. Yeah. research. Um, so it's kind of this untapped body of, of information that you know, I sort of felt had a lot of value because in that industry, in asset management, um, information is really everything. It's sort mm. of you know, what, what sort of pays your bills and, and, and your compensation. Um, today, you know, we have over 10,000 members from funds from around the world and it's really become, I think, um, almost like a standard tool that people use uh, to come up with new investment ideas, to vet out existing investment ideas. Um, and also to build their networks and their brands and reputations. So has, it, has this been growing or expanding with the market or, or does it sort of follow the market in the way you have subscriptions um, or more? So, um, you know, as a startup, I think you know, you're so small that the you're market's always almost irrelevant. You know, yeah. you're, you always want to grow regardless of the market. Um, you know, I think if the markets are doing well, it helps us in the sense that it makes um, funds that are looking for new research vendors. Uh, it just makes them, I think, more interested in, 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 mm. in paying for, for research subscriptions uh, for new products. They're more likely to test kind of new, new concepts, uh, you know, and, and sort of maybe play around with their budgets a little bit. So in that way, it does help us uh, that the markets, I think, have, though they've been volatile, have been, I think, at least, you know, going up, uh, mm. you know, as far as the overall trend. So you, you talked about you know communities and Wikipedia, yeah. and, and you're of course known for the other community that yeah. you founded earlier in Harvard, which yeah. is in many ways is seen as the inspiration or the precursor to Facebook. Tell us about that. Yeah, I was a, you know just a, another student in college, uh, mm -hmm. thinking about what I wanted to do with my life, and um, you know I just sort of saw the the social hurdles on campus. Mm. You know, even if you live in the same dorm as someone, sometimes it's hard to get to know them, you know, or hard to see what what you might share in common with that person, mm. or you know, if it's someone else in a different dorm or a different class or a different school, um, you know, it made a lot of sense to me that hey, why not build an online tool for students? And you know, the the the, the sort of key insight was, um, you know, unlike some of the other uh, social networking websites that existed at that time, this was back in you know 2002, 2003, um, you could actually verify the the membership of of that person with a particular community just by looking at their email address. Mm. So everyone at Harvard has a harvard.edu email right, address. Right. And so it was a very low tech way <laughs> to ensure the quality of the community um, and you know make it um, kind of kind of uh, magnify the natural affinities that exist offline but mm. online. Mm. Um, and so you know it was it was a very simple I think kind of insight at the time I was an applied math major I'd, I'd studied some computer science but I wasn't a programmer myself. Mm. Um, and at that time, there literally, I mean, you could count on your hand the number of people who were interested in, you know, um, Web 2.0 or, 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 you know, entrepreneurship within the internet <laughs> realm. So it was a struggle to find people who, you know, would, would want to work with me to, to build this out. It was tough finding engineers. It's obviously tough finding engineers now, but I think that's because there's so <laughs> much demand need, and limited yeah. supply. Back then, there was plenty of supply, but, you know, a lot of students didn't want to leave the classroom, they were worried about their grades, they were worried about 
you know, I've got a big final coming up. Why should I work on an independent project? I should study for my, my exams. Um, and, you know, I, I went through a string of developers uh, until I, you know, uh, came across Mark and the rest of the story is, I think, well documented. But mm. the initial inspiration of it was, um, was just something, you know, stemming from my own experiences as a student. Mm. Yeah. And, and so Connect2 was the, was the, was the company, right? Oh, uh, yeah, it was, it was initially named Harvard Connection. Yeah, and then so it became... So we renamed the name to Connect U. Hmm. Um, but yeah, same company. Right. So is, is, does Connect U exist at all today? No. No. Okay. The, we uh, settled Facebook in 2008, hmm. and part of that settlement, part of that agreement was, was to shut down uh, Connect U. So what, what's, what's the sort of lesson if you were to apply the same uh, what you went through then today? Yeah. I mean, what would you tell people who are yeah. you know, I think thinking of ideas and... Yeah. Um, kind of broad business uh, takeaways, you know, one, um, I think trusting your instincts is a, is a big one. Mm. Uh, you know, I was, uh, I was obviously like very young at that time. And I think the mentality of entrepreneurs, especially, um, you know, in the tech universe, is to sort of go, 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 right? It's, it's let's make things happen as quickly as possible. Um, and, you know, for me, like the need to, um, to get this idea um, to fruition, to like mm. to actually release some, you know, a website um, was, was, you know, a, yeah, was somewhat overwhelming, so much so that, you know, I, I probably, um, you know, put aside some of my, uh, you know, some of my misgivings about, you know, who I was working with and like, is this, you know, is this person somebody that, is a good fit for our team, you know, is that sort of, is there a good personality and, and sort of culture fit? Um, now at Sum Zero, when we hire, I mean, regardless mm. of the person's technical background, mm. we're very sort of on top of, do we like this person? You know, how do we feel about how this person's gonna gel with our team? Do they have the same mindset? Or is their time horizon the same as ours? You know, are they in it for the long run? Um, and those, those sort of softer issues are like so crucial to establishing the right rapport and, and building the kind of culture um, that, that, that's necessary to build the you know, product that, that you want and that, that does justice to your vision. Um, so trusting your instincts is, is, I think, a very important one. I think as far as social networking goes, for, for people who are interested in social networking, um, one of the similarities actually between what we were doing at, you know, with Harvard Connection and, 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 and even some Zero and a lot of other successful networks is um, you know, really kind of thinking about what's going to engage members uh, what's going to um, create the sort of community mm -hmm. where it's not just about number of users, but how they're communicating, what's the quality of the conversation they're having. Um, so actually with Sum Zero, we vet out every single person who applies to Sum Zero, and we actually reject you know, 75% or so of the folks who apply because we're, look, we're targeting a very particular kind of user. Um, you know, back with Harvard Connection, it was all about, did you go to Harvard, right? It was, mm -hmm. what's mm -hmm. your school affiliation? You know, today for us, it's about, um, you know, what, what, what's your professional background? Do you work on the buy side? Do you work at an investment firm? Uh, because if you don't, you know, some is probably not the right fit. Um, and, and we've been very good about, I think, um, making sure the quality of the community is as high as possible because that's what drives engagement. And without engagement, you can't really monetize, you know, the business. Um, mm. So, that's so you're saying instinct and then people in that order, perhaps. And, and yeah. what are the other lessons or takeaways that, you know, again, I'm saying I come back to the same point. I mean, we are talking at, at, at the sidelines of a, of a product technology uh, conference. And yeah. uh, a lot um, of young people there, have ideas. There are a lot of things. I mean, I think one of the things that um, I experienced at Sum Zero um, were sort of founder issues. I mean, obviously, mm. we experienced founder <laughs> issues with, with Harvard Connection. but. Um, I get asked a lot about, you know, um, why did you go to law school? What do you think about, uh, you know, like sort of the, the legal um, uh, sort of aspects of starting a business, um, documentation, things like that. Um, one of the things that I struggled with, with, with at Sum Zero was I had one co-founder, also a Harvard guy who I went to school with, um, who when I was in graduate school, you know, I thought that after I finished, both of us would, would kind of uh, work full time at some zero, it turned out he decided not to. Mm. So we had a situation where you know we, we both owned half of the business, but I was the one who was going to be working day to day, and he was kind of going to you know really take on more of an advisory role. The negotiation process um, to have him transfer a portion of his equity towards me took eight months and was um, you know very challenging Hit to say the least. So you know just had we had you know simple vesting agreements. Um, rather than having fully vested equity would have made that process a lot easier. And I think you know, that's like just one of the many things that um, 
any founder or group of founders especially should think about as they're starting a business. There's a lot of like, um, call it uh, startup infrastructure that needs to be laid out mm. uh, to ensure that in the long run, when you're trying to raise capital or you know, um, as the business grows, that the right people are being compensated fairly for their contributions um, mm. you know, to the overall business. So what, what are the couple of things that you liked about Mark and what did you not like? Uh, I mean, he's clearly a smart guy. He's very enterprising. There's mm -hmm. no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the things that I was having trouble with as a student, as an undergrad, was just getting people to think entrepreneurially. It was like, you know, I think a lot of people go to school and they're on a path. It's like, I have to be a doctor or I'm mm -hmm. going to go be, you know, there, there's a prestige associated mm -hmm. with working at a Google or a, a Goldman Sachs or a McKinsey or some of these firms. Um, and, and I think a lot of people, you know, don't realize that they have options that they, they, they can act, at least back then. I mean, today mm. it's a little different because entrepreneurship is, is like kind of the, the, the trend, right? New but, cool, yeah, yeah, the new Kool-Aid, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 there's a little bit of ex like a kind of almost irrational <laughs> exuberance, I think, around, mm. around tech. But um, even then, I think, um, you know, the, you know the, the good entrepreneurs like know when to take risks and to kind of step away from ch just checking boxes and, and, and uh, you know, accumulating as many brands on their resume as possible and actually do something that, that is innovative. And, and to that, you know, for that, you have to give the guy credit. Um, and, you know, uh, but, but to be honest, like nowadays, I don't, I don't even think about Mark. I'm actually a shareholder, shareholder, shareholder of Facebook. Hmm. So, um, so you would wish him I, success. I want the company to do, <laughs> do great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they've, they've clearly done a great job. Right. Anyway, thank you so much for yeah. speaking Thanks with for us, Divya. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Yep.